I love most every kind of instrument, but certain instruments speak more to me than others. When Richard Stoltzman plays the clarinet, this is a magnificent instrument. He can, he can turn around and do a, a Mozart cl clarinet concerto and the next turn around and do straight on jazz. This is, this is a f just an all around total musician's musician. Now even more exciting for me, <coughs> as someone who teaches, of course, uh, occasionally in American music history and who, who loves American music, the chance to do an all-American program was very appealing. The excitement of being able to put in uh, types, different types of sounds and rhythms such as jazz and other elements and, of, of American music. The chance to do an all-American program was very appealing. So this is an all-American program of Richard Stoltzman. One of the big pieces on the program is the Copeland Clarinet Concerto. Now this is, this is one incredible piece. The history on this is amazing. Benny Goodman, we all know him as a jazz player. Benny Goodman was also a seriously good clarinet player and a great classical player, by the way. Benny Goodman commissioned this piece. He said, my only, my only rules I'd like is um, I get the first two years exclusivity. And he paid him $2,000 for the concerto. And the first performance of it was with the NBC Orchestra, and it was a radio broadcast. A, a, a sideline bar on that, by the way, as Bernstein, who was in Israel at the time, kept writing Copeland, they were friends, saying, I want to be the one to conduct this first performance of this. Didn't happen. Uh, Bernstein was trying to get it at Tanglewood. Uh, the directors at Tanglewood did not want this on the program because they heard it had some jazz elements, and they did not want that necessarily at Tanglewood. The other sidebar that I find, that I find really fascinating is that when, when the New York Philharmonic traveled with Bernstein to um, to uh, Japan in 1970. This was the only American piece they put on the program. And supposedly after the concert in Tokyo, uh, Drucker, the, the famous clarinetist with the New York Phil, who played it, had to make four curtain calls. There was eight minutes of ovation at the end of this piece. And uh, finally had to be asked the audience to, uh, to quit applauding because it was so popular. It's now one of the great standards in the clarinet repertoire. It, it, it's refreshing, it's fun. Uh, you won't think that you're allowed to have this much fun listening to, to classical music. Copeland in his memoirs talked about how this was so successful and Benny Goodman commissioning it and, and playing it and two other players that he especially loved to hear play it. He said Drucker and Stoltzman. So you're hearing a masterpiece done with the master musician, uh, it, it's, it's a cool piece. And beside that, it's just great fun. Also on that program, it's Bernstein Sonata that was originally written for piano and, um, and uh, clarinet, and it was the first piece that he ever had published. And what I hear when I hear this piece, I hear foreshadowings of West Side Story in how he treats that melody and how he treats the rhythms. Then on that same program, if that's not enough, you're going to get some George Gershwin a suite from Porgy and Bess of, of music from there written for clarinet and strings. And, and it, it, will be, it, it will be just astounding. It'll have some of the tunes that you've recognized in there, such as I Got Plenty of Nothing, and uh, Bess, You're My Woman Now, has the traditional pieces in there. But it's a whole suite for clarinet and arranged for strings. So this is going to be just an exciting program. A master artist at the top of his game, um, arguably the most famous, I don't know, I'm not even sure you can argue this. I think most people recognize that this is maybe the greatest clarinet player of our time. The, the Tiki Performance Hall, Concert Hall, is as acoustically fine, excellent room of any place I've ever known. And it is such an intimate setting. To imagine to hear a Richard Stoltzman in this intimate setting, completely different than going to a Lincoln Center and setting back rows and rows or a Carnegie Hall, you're right in the room with them. You feel part of the experience. And ultimately, that's really what classical music does. This is, this is an art form that the experience is the total package. The listening to great music in a beautiful setting should transcend you. And that's what the Bach Festival is all about, is life-changing experiences. <laughs>